September 26, 2025. What appeared to be a typical comet suddenly trufted near the sun. Its light left to naked eye brilliance, and its tail fanned wider than five full moons, drawing global attention as seen 2025 Arta Swan raced toward Earth far faster than predicted. In less than two days, the sun unleashed its most potent flare in months, sending a magnetic storm directly into the region Swan traversed. Fears rose that this new visitor could produce even more cosmic spectacle and danger than the infamous Atlas C 2019 Y4. One astronomer stood out in a sea of others. The question came back again, will Swan's approach ignite an unprecedented sky event or vanish without warning? The answer starts with the outburst that changed everything. On September 12, 2025, Comet C 2025R2, now known as SWAN, swept through perihelion its closest approach to the Sun at just half an astronomical unit, or about 75 million kilometers. That's closer to the Sun than Mars ever gets to Earth. In the glare of twilight, SWAN was a faint visitor, magnitude 7 point for slipping through the constellation Virgo. For most, it was invisible without binoculars. Even with optical aid, the comet appeared as little more than a dim, softly glowing patch. Its coma barely stood out from the background haze. The short, slender tail stretched only about to across the sky roughly the width of four full moons hinting at activity but falling well short of spectacle. The geometry at perihelion placed Swan in a difficult position for ground observers. Its low angle, the thick air above the horizon, and the sun's glare swallowed much of its light. Only the most dedicated astronomers, armed with sensitive cameras and meticulous tracking software, could tease out its presence. SWAN was first clearly detected on September 11th by SOHO's ultraviolet instrument designed to spot hydrogen emissions. Vladimir Bazugi, scanning the data, recognized a faint new streak a telltale sign of a comet. Within hours, the Minor Planet Center confirmed the sighting and officially designated its scene 2025R to SWAN. At this stage, SWAN's behavior fit the classic script for a long-period comet. Its nearly parabolic orbit suggested a journey from the distant or cloud of frozen shell encasing the solar system. The nucleus remained buried beneath dust and gas. Photometric models predicted a slow, steady brightening as it circled the sun and moved outward. Early reports mentioned a greenish coma typical of diatomic carbon and cyanogen exposed to solar radiation. The faint tail, blurred by low altitude and sunset glow, was seen best from the Southern Hemisphere Australia, South Africa, Argentina. Most logged it as a curiosity, not a showstopper. The numbers were clear. Magnitude 7.4, a 2-degree tail, perihelion at 0.5 astronomical units. No sign of the drama to come. Swan was just another distant traveler, secrets still hidden beneath its crust. September 26, 2025. The evening began quietly. Yet in backyards and observatories across the globe, unmistakable events unfolded. From Yamagata, Japan, Koichi Itagaki scanned the sky and logged a sharp jump on his photometer far beyond predictions. Hours later, Michael Matiazo in suburban Adelaide confirmed it. The comet's brightness had surged nearly a full magnitude, vaulting from 7.4 to 5.7, then 5.8. In practical terms, SWAN had crossed the threshold into naked eye visibility under rural skies, a rare event that set astronomy forums alight within minutes. At first, the change wasn't obvious visually, but numbers told the story. The once modest tail had grown to span more than 2.5 wider than five consecutive full moons. Even in city haze, binoculars revealed detail, a broad golden dust fan and a sharper electric blue ion tail, both evolving night by night. Amateurs swapped raw images and processed frames, comparing jets and kinks bursting near the nucleus. Itagaki's log read, Swan erupted like a cosmic geyser. Tail now spans five stars. Mariazo noted, Sky brilliance doubled overnight. Faint streamers now visible even in suburban haze. The cause lay deep inside. Buried volatile pockets carbon dioxide, water, and possibly exotic ices reached their limit. 
The crust cracked under solar heat, jets burst through, and the coma bloomed outward. The effect was immediate, not just a spike in brightness, but new features near the core, visible as knots and rays and high contrast images. Light curves posted in real time to global networks showed Swan veering from predictions. Each observation became a clue to its hidden structure. Telegram groups, forums, and cloud-hosted logbooks buzzed with brightness estimates, tail measurements, and spectral hints of cyanogen and diatomic carbon. Professionals joined in, repointing telescopes to capture quick images. Swan had transformed from a faint curiosity into a global event, a live experiment unfolding in the sky, open to anyone with a camera or curiosity. By late September, Swan's brightness surged and its tail unfurled into a double spectacle, one broad, golden, and slow. The other, a sharp electric blue streak that changed by the hour. These hues told their own story. The golden dust fan, made of tiny grains blasted off the nucleus, was pushed outward by sunlight, forming a slow-moving arc that traced the comet's path. The blue ion tail, made of stripped molecules like CO and CN, glowed under ultraviolet light but was at the mercy of the solar wind snapping, rippling, and sometimes breaking entirely. Observers marveled, the dust tail steady and majestic, the ion tail restless and alive. Together, they turned SWAN into a living laboratory of solar system physics. Dust tracked the comet's past, ions revealed the sun's mood. Across continents and time zones, telescopes backyard Dobsonians in Cape Town, robotic wide fields in Queensland joined the pursuit. On September 27th alone, spaceweather.com logged over 300 image submissions. Swan had become a rallying point for a planet watching the sky. Each frame shows how the comet is expanding, stories seen from a new angle. Some observers, like 14-year-old Priya Mehta in Mumbai, use nothing more than a pair of digital cameras and binoculars, arranging exposures in a stack to reveal the faint blue ion tail filament through city fog. Others, experienced comet hunters from Chile and New Zealand, post side-by-side -side comparisons. The tail's nighttime toes change, kinks, flashes of bright knots, and even rays branching from the nucleus. The scale of this involvement is unprecedented. Telegram groups and astronomy forums become live control rooms, with users posting raw photometry, timeline annotations, and spectral hints in real time. A crowdsourced logbook tracks every brightness estimate, revealing the comet's unpredictable leaps and lulls. In suburban skies, even casual stargazers catch glimpses, mistaking the golden dust fan for a far-off contrail until the arc continues to glow long after aircraft have passed. Light can't keep up with the comet's reach through pollution. In Sydney, a teacher sets up a lunchtime viewing for students who gasp as the tail stretches across the schoolyard sky, wider than five full moons laid end to end. Professional astronomers join the chorus, shifting schedules at major observatories to document SWAN's evolution. Data pours in from SOHO, ground-based telescopes, and an ever-expanding archive of amateur images. Each upload becomes a piece of the puzzle, helping to chart the comet's rapid changes. The international effort is not just about spectacle, it's about readiness. With the sun entering an active epoch and a significant solar flare brewing, the community braces for the possibility of a direct encounter between Swan's tail and a coronal mass ejection CME. Every observer, from first-timers to seasoned veterans, stands poised to catch the moment when solar wind meets comet and the sky writes its next chapter. September 28, 8.43 UTC. An M6 4-class flare explodes on the sun, blasting X-rays with its strongest power in months and releasing charged particles from sunspot region for 1,232. Within minutes, coronagraphs on board SOHO and stereo satellites confirm the launch of a swift CME from the corona, its leading edge racing outward at 800 to 1,000 kilometers per second. The flare's energy output lights up global solar monitoring charts. But this time, Earth isn't the target. 
Model overlays from Enlil simulations display a broad front entering the same field of space that Comet Swan occupies. NASA, ESA, and NOAA forecast teams scramble to update projections. Solar ejections don't travel in perfect lines. They twist and billow through the solar system, their true path shaped by magnetic fields and solar rotation. Analysts stitch together coronagraph images and real-time solar wind readings, plotting the shock front of the CME against the positions of planets, satellites, and, for the first time in years, a comet with a tail stretching more than two across the sky. Inside Slack channels, mission control alerts fly. Dr. Rachel Pell of NOA urges run new Enlil models, focus on SWAN's coordinates. Dr. Juan Alvarez at ESA cautions, due to unknown magnetic polarity, if BZ reconnects quickly, be prepared, things could go downhill. Best estimates place SWAN's proximity to the CME's arrival at 48 to 72 hours after launch. Density projections suggest a moderate event, enough to disturb the ion tail, possibly sever it, but not strong enough to trigger effects at Earth. For comet observers, the inquiry shifts away from brightness and tail length toward a countdown that is more urgent. What will happen when this solar plasma wall slams into Swan's charged tail? The global network of amateur and professional astronomers readies cameras and telescopes, preparing for a window when magnetic reconnection could play out live in view from both hemispheres. The setup is complete. Now the solar wind carries the next move. When the CME sweeps through Swan's sector, the sky becomes a plasma laboratory. Within 90 minutes, the ion tail of the comet reveals telltale signs of magnetic reconnection, a break, a sudden kink, and a glowing fragment drifting away at nearly 130 kilometers per second. Doppler spectroscopy from observatories in Chile and South Africa captures the velocity spike, confirming the plasma was severed and hurled into space by the CME's tangled magnetic fields. For the first time, amateurs coordinate with professionals to document the event as it unfolds, uploading images and spectra with timestamps in near real time. As October 21st approaches, SWAN sweeps to just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth, weaving across the equator during a new moon. Its tail, still recovering from cosmic surgery, stretches across southern constellations, visible from Argentina to Australia. In Nebraska, a high school astronomy club joins the campaign, braving bitter cold to synchronize telescopes with the SALT Observatory in South Africa. Their aim, to map the tail's three-dimensional structure. By comparing images from opposite sides of the planet, they trace subtle shifts in the tail's position, early steps toward a complete 3D reconstruction. Maria Vasquez, the club's student leader, posts, We watched the tail jump in real time. It felt like riding the sun's wind. Meanwhile, a rare alignment plays out overhead. Swan sails past its nearest point just as the interstellar visitor one eye. Atlas reaches superior conjunction. Both comets share the same patch of sky as seen from space. The contrast is stark, Swan's riotous, ever-changing tail versus Atlas's faint, steady glow. Spectra from Hubble reveal Swan's classic solar system ices, water, carbon dioxide, organic traces, while Atlas carries signatures of faraway interstellar chemistry. For a brief window, the solar system hosts both a native wanderer and an interstellar guest, their stories written in light, their differences mapped by a global network of eyes and instruments. On September 28, 2025, the M6.4 for Flare launched its CME into the same region of space as Comet C, 2025R to Swan. Within days, coordinated amateur and professional observations captured the comet's twitching tail, stretching more than five times the width of the full moon. Despite a wealth of data, real-time images, Doppler spectroscopy, spectra the precise effects of the CME on Swan's ion tail, including whether it's separated or reconnected magnetically, remain under scientific review. On October 21, 2025, when Swan passed just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth, the spectacle was documented worldwide. Simultaneously, Comet 3i, 
Atlas offered an unprecedented opportunity for comparison to rare visitors, side by side. Important questions remain about solar wind interactions and comet evolution. Yet the worldwide response to SWAN has shown that space remains a dynamic laboratory where new discoveries depend on open data and global collaboration.